Hello, this is a, this is a continuation for um, investigation of primes which can be written as a sum of two squares. So the criterion is, well, conjectural criterion is that it is possible for an odd prime To be, a sum, to be written as a sum of two squares, if and only if um, it is congruent to one mod four. So um, let's see. Um, yeah, we have we have we have um, it proved one way. If it is possible, then the prime has to be congruent to one mod four. Let's prove the converse now. So we will assume that p is congruent to one mod four, has remained one divided by four. And let's argue following Don Zagui. Don Zagui's brilliant idea um, that it is possible to find A and B. So the um, observation we made last time is since P is odd, one has to be odd, the other is even. So we um, can, as before, choose A to be odd. But B being even um, allows us to rewrite the uh, B squared into 4 times square of something else, say C. This is because B is 2 times C. And um, that is basically equivalent, so there's nothing much happened. Uh, let's now um, follow the idea of the game and in, um, enlarge the set of solutions, possible solutions, to, um, to, um, uh, to the set of solutions of some uh, weaker equations. So now we look at uh, possible ways of writing p as some square plus 4, and let's just um, take the square of c, c times c, and write it as c times d. So this is a, a new equation, now three unknowns. It always has a solution uh, under this assumption. We can always choose a to be 1, and uh, so, um, so c, and then d will be um, that ratio p minus 1 over 4. So by assumption uh, it is always a natural number. The key idea of um, Zagui is to look at the set of uh, these solutions and uh, the set of the original uh, pairs A and B um, is a part of this and it is um, a part of um, those where C and D are equal. But in general, uh, flipping C and D will give us another solution, so that is an operation on the set of solutions. If we have A, C, D, a triple, which is a solution of the second equation, I'll just call it solution. Then so is A, D, C. And this is an operation which undoes itself. So done twice, it is uh, like doing nothing. It is called an involution. For that matter, because um, that is the official name of uh, operations which um, done twice do nothing. So these involutions can leave something fixed. So the fixed points are those which are not changed really. When uh, we start with something and do our transformation end up with something with, a, with exactly the same thing. And that is if and only if c is equal to d. So fixed uh, solutions Are just exactly solutions of the form CC and they are solutions of our original equation and that's what we really after. We want to have at least one so we want to know that the, there is one but uh, this involution uh, groups things in pairs well in general if they are not solutions of the original equation then they will be changed and we'll have a pair of solution and then if um, we want to have it, it's enough to just know that uh, uh, not everything is paired up. 
So there will be one, um, at least one left. So if the number of solutions of this equation is odd, we are done. And uh, that can be argued um, with the help of a different involution. But before I will do um, 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 uh, explain this involution, um, I will um, have to introduce a geometric shape, a geometric sort of presentation for uh, solutions of this equation. So what do we have? We have um, the square of some number a, and then we have four um, products which can be drawn as rectangles. That is uh, our prime, that is um, our prime presented. And um, um, geometrically, how can we arrange um, uh, these four, uh, five bits uh, so that it will look pleasing? Well, we can put a square in the middle and say then attach um, uh, the four bits um, along the short sides of them to the square in this sort of um, a regular way. What is created um, can be called a windmill. So that is a, a, a way of, of um, uh, employing our geometric intuition which helps seeing things. Well, this is one way of um, assembling them and that is sort of one, uh, say chosen way. But uh, if we do an involution to our solution, that means flipping C and D. Uh, so that means then, then D is uh, the, uh, uh, this side. And uh, we could also arrange uh, a different windmill out of the bits we have. So we could do it this way. It's a different shape, overall shape. Uh, the bulk becomes bulky and the uh, wings become shorter, but uh, it is the same area. After all, it's just the same sum. So that is uh, a geometric meaning of the first involution. The solutions now are windmills with a fixed area. Um, the solutions of this equation are in one-to-one -one correspondence with um, this uh, windmills with a fixed area and uh, this involution just changes one windmill into this other windmill. Let me describe the second involution which um, uh, was introduced by Zagier, which will uh, guarantee that we have a solution. So the second involution starts with the shape. We fix the shape of a windmill. We don't look inside uh, how it is separated into the inner square and, and the wings. So we just fix the shape. try to be kind of consistent with my with my wings. So that is a fixed shape. And with each fixed shape, let me do it again. Now I have to do it again. I could associate two separations into five bits, like here. So one separation will be just to continue this side. And that is um, the, the first way of separating. The other is to continue this way. And then we have a smaller, way smaller in this case, central square surrounded by um, four rectangles. So that is the second involution. That's how it groups together um, solutions. Uh, solutions are moved into each other if and only if they have the same overall shape. So let's look at what is uh, what are fixed uh, solutions under this involution. What are fixed um, points? It's not hard to argue that the only, there is only one, and the only fixed point is the cross. So when we have 
our area represented is just square one and then uh, side one long uh, rect four rectangles attached to it. So that is just this uh, very first solution. That is the only shape which is um, impossible to um, separate in two different ways. The, the two ways we're supposed to do it uh, will actually be the same. Um, that is easy to argue, that is just the absence of, of, of this possibility in, in the shape. So in the shape we don't have this second decomposition ring. And that is the only fixed point. And that means that the number of solutions is going to be odd, because we will have uh, just a cross and then everything else will be paired up in this way. way. So since the number of solutions is odd, uh, the number of um, pairs given by this involution will also be not, uh, so the, the pairs will not cover everything, there will be at least something, one left, and that will be a solution of this shape, uh, which is our original A and B, effectively, and hence uh, we have a proof. So, um, enjoy. See you later.